because the IIHF has really let women's hockey down for a second straight year. Um, uh, all IIHF tournaments in January have apparently been cancelled. Cancelled, not postponed. Um, including in there, I believe, are multiple women's tournaments, and the headline is the U18 tournament for a second straight year being cancelled. Um, what's significant about that, if you're thinking, nah, it's safety and whatnot, um, the men's, the world juniors we just talked about, the U20s, will still be taking place, which is rich because we're Games are getting canceled left and right. I stole that from Alex from our previous take, and I make no chagrin about it. Anyway, um, for those of you who want to hear a terrible response to the whole thing from the head of the IIHF, President Luke Tardif, listen to the new episodes of the Ray and Drags podcast. Uh, it's it's not a very long episode. Uh, 20 minutes of it is the Tardif interview. I asked both the guys to listen to it. Because uh, from the fallout from this tournament being canned, as well as some other ones, uh, many, many women's hockey players, of course, Marie Philippe Poulin, uh, Blair Turnbull, Hillary Knight, all of them, and some other non hockey people like Gary D, which was pretty funny. Um, Maxime Comtois, NHL player, former captain of the World Junior team a couple of years ago, um, have all kind of come out and supported the women's uh, game. Hockey Canada have, the USA Hockey have. And in this interview, I think Tardif put more effort into calling out USA Hockey. And saying, how about you give us a plan instead of a, calling us out? Then he probably did into keeping that women's tournament alive. I thought it was just, did you guys kind of hear in the background, as Tardif is talking, you can almost hear someone bang a desk. Did it not, like he sounded so personally attacked by all the crap the double IHF again, even though it was completely yeah. self-inflicted. Like what an embarrassment. Um. Yeah, no, that was beyond embarrassing. Like, I, I mean, when they canceled the, the, when they made the cancellations, I, I, I was thinking about it and, you know, everyone loves to talk about, it, it's like we're divided in sides here. Well, we, we want to grow the game, but the business of the game, what we have to realize as hockey, as the hockey community is because it is a sport, this isn't a business. This isn't just a, strictly a business. Now, maybe to, and we'll get to the NHL because I think the NHL is in a different situation, but they are trying to grow the game. The, the, the role of the double IHF in my eyes is to grow the game. Like, I, I don't know if that's necessarily a, a popular take. It's just what I think. So for them to come out and not put, just postpone them, but cancel them makes zero sense. It is almost 2022. I get we're in a pandemic, but every other sports league has found a way to overcome the, the, the pandemic. Has there been bumps in the road? Absolutely. A hundred percent. But that shouldn't stop them from trying to find a solution. The audacity for him to come out and say, number one, uh, that you know the U.S. hockey, that USA hockey should cu- give them a plan is that that oh disgusting. Number two, the idea that well, I mean, we have to run forty-two championship world championships a year. That's your job. That's your job. Like plain and simple, it's your job to run these forty-two championships. You find a way to do it. Come up with a solution. Uh, everyone else has done it except you except the double IHF they are we love to pounce on the NHL for not growing the game it's time to pounce on the double IHF for not helping grow the game because it is more than just the NHL it's the double IHF it's what was ridiculous too was the I think and to sort of piggyback off your point there is it's also not USA hockey's job to have a backup plan for these tournaments and in that interview and I don't know if it's because Luke Tardif's English isn't the best i think you know there was some umming and awing there obviously french is his first language um but you know obviously sounding annoyed doesn't do you any, any favors here um he talked about how the situation has changed as if he made the point of mentioning how many nhl games were postponed in like november compared to the christmas break when like if you're going to talk about big sports leagues look at adam silver's point to the fact that well COVID's not going anywhere and it was almost another really, really annoying thing. I'm going to read the double IHF statement in a second here. 
was Tardy sort of mentioning like we don't pick gender here and you know COVID doesn't pick gender. Alex had a really funny tweet where it was like COVID doesn't pick the month either. <laughs> I thought that was really good, Alex. Well, because it, that was the point he was trying to make and it was just sorry, it was dumb because it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter. It, like yes, you're right. COVID does not pick gender. COVID does not pick months. Uh, the games happening between December 26th and December 20, uh, December 31st are not magically going to be COVID free because you said that we're going to cancel all the tournaments in January. Oh no. COVID's going to run away. No, that's not how it works. He, he also said like, I don't know quite the point he was trying to make, but he mentioned the age of the athletes and it being a health concern somehow because they were like, like U18 girls, but it's like, dude, there's a 16 year old playing for Team Canada right now. What are you talking about? And they are like, they're all in the range. Like, that's the one thing that kind of got me too, where he spoke about gender, he spoke about age, and he's like, this is the level of concern that we have here. But then okay, when I, when I was listening to this, I'm like, no one is under five years old. If I'm going to use it in the most extreme example, everybody who's there is eligible to be fully vaccinated. Yeah, exactly. That's a very good way of putting it, Daniel. That's a very good way of putting it. So here's, um, I'll read the statement. I don't think, I'm not going to read it all at once because I, I guarantee there's going to be parts we're going to want to pick off here. So this is the official statement from IIHF President Luke Tardif. I saw originally was on their Twitter. So, uh, quote, this is not a gender issue. This is a COVID-19 issue. I would ask in turn how it is fair to postpone all the time the top divisions are all wait. Okay, hold on a minute. Can I, can I stop um, you for a second? Yes. It's not a COVID issue, by the way. It's a money issue. Yeah. 100%. It's a money. Like, let's, let's not be dumb about it. It's the same thing with Adam Silver saying, well, there's no logic to pausing the season. There's no logic to pausing the season because fans are still willing to pay top dollar to go see your product, despite star players being out. That it, it, That's a purely a business thing. They're making their decision because of money, not COVID-19. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Um, no worries. I would ask in turn, how is it fair to postpone all the time the top divisions and always to simply cancel the lower divisions? That's that's me reading it word for word, by the way. I don't think they put this. I don't think anyone proofread this. Um, uh, continuing, uh, these cancellations have affected six tournaments, not just one, uh, including two men's U20 events that critics seem to conveniently forget. Okay, first off... I, People have been pointing out the other tournaments as well. It's just he's ignoring the fact back-to-back years in this part specifically. Um, Also, you're still missing the point. I think he's still kind of missing the point. Um, He sounds so defensive here too. Like, dude, just like um, it's almost like like he went to the Gary Batman school of how to defend oneself, except he didn't quite you know go back. Same composure. I know. I I think Tardif is a bit more aggressive about it. Yeah, but like Gary, he's not, Gary he's not can as be practiced. Yes, Gary's exactly. Been do, Gary's been doing this for twenty five years. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's a, he's he a knows, practice, he knows how to he's a practiced out. NHL commissioner. Listen, mm-hmm. we're we're canceling the season. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Rick West has a question. That's too bad. Um, continuing <laughs> here, in a normal season, we are not canceling anything. The IIHF is not in the business of canceling tournaments. We are here to play tournaments, but we are battling circumstances that are out of our control. And to be perfectly honest, we have to think of the future too. I, I don't know what exactly he means by the future too. So what do you not want to... Is the risk of putting a tournament together and then COVID ravages and you can't afford to... You don't think you're going to make the money back? I, I, you see, I, I don't get what he means there. This, this statement is so much more concerning than anything the NHL has ever done trying to grow the game because he's missing the point. He's not getting a grasp of what's, what the point is. Yes, there's a factor of two years in a row, the U18s, world, the world U8, Women's World U18 Championships were canceled. But you you canceled six tournaments and let one go because what? Because it started four days before January. Um, Continuing here. Um, Is there an economic incentive to host the men's world championship and world juniors every year, no matter what? Absolutely. Um, 
But people misunderstand that uh, that this is because we favor men over women's hockey, which is completely false. The revenue generated from these two events enable our federation to survive and support the operations of all other IIHF World Championship events. So I have to make so blah. So if I have to make every effort to host a specific tournament to ensure the survival of other events, then that is my responsibility as the IIHF president to do so. So. Let's just understand this, right? Because, yeah, we got to remember, a big story has been that, what is it, the only player in, in, in the history of hockey to have won a, a world junior after winning a world a world championship medal, I think is Bergeron. Yeah. But Owen Power could do it. So the reason I mention that is because, yeah, he won a world championship earlier this year because the men's world championship happened without a problem. Now, I think there was the women's worlds that happened too, and you know that took place, and Canada won gold, suck at America. Um, again, the world juniors right now are happening. I think you can argue that all of those are very high-level events that can bring in good revenue. The, the, remember, the women's happened because everyone complained yeah. that they weren't going to do it. That was the plan. The plan was was they were going to cancel it. And he made a big point of saying last year, oh, everyone blamed was the Saskatchewan government. Or he's like, no one blamed the government there when people absolutely did. I remember Cassie Campbell Pascal making a point of this is on the government and the IIHF because they didn't have a backup plan. You're telling me they didn't have a a plan B in case the world juniors got messed up? No, of course they did. I, I saw this story going around about Steve Jobs. Um, and you'll understand the content, the why. So they were talking about when the first iPhone came out, when they did the presentation in front of, they do the um, the conference, when they did the presentation at the conference, they had five iPhones there, five in case, and, and they knew that there was a probably a good chance that the first iPhone was gonna wasn't gonna finish the entire conference along with the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth. They had a plan. They had a backup plan. They had a backup backup plan. Where that's how that's a business. That's running a business properly. This is that's not what they're doing. They're clearly not doing it. Also, he contradicts himself there. Uh, when he, as soon as he says that, it, it, it's absolutely a financial incentive, and then goes on to say, "Well, we got to make sure that all these federations survive." So it's not a COVID nineteen issue, as he said in his very first sentence. Um, the second part of the statement is just really going over, like, "Oh, we've been doing this since this and this. Uh, we support this many women for the raid." Yeah, like it's just a bunch of sort of padding crap that's not really important. Um, also, in that Ray and Dra- Drags interview, uh, he mentioned that that he doesn't want to use the term of rescheduling because then it, he's committed to it, which I thought, okay, that's from Gary Bettman's play school. The look that Alex is making right now. I don't know. I, know, I, I don't know what so to upset, say. Yeah. I don't know what to say. Like, because it's, I, I, it's genuinely concerning. Like, you know, this is the guy who is running the International Ice Hockey Federation, who oversees Hockey Canada, USA Hockey, Ger- like the programs in Germany, around the world, every single hockey federation. And I, I just felt, you know, look at how he, he's handled uh, the Andre Deniskin stuff. You know, apparently he's played internationally in within the month of December. So again, what a failure of handling that. And, you know, ha- and then handling this, you had an opportunity to look at how your predecessors handled last year and you chose to essentially handle it the same way. And that's the most disappointing part. And these guys are now in charge of growing the game of hockey around the world. By the way, so um, the way, like canceling like tournaments especially, um, it was five apparently, this is from uh, Michelle J on Twitter, this will cancel every single U18 women's tournament, all five of them. All five of them. That's insane. It's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of hockey. That's a lot of showcase. That's just, um, it's... Again, it's it's Alex's thing of growing the game. Well, freaking, it's kind of di- it's not even where like the NHL aren't associated with a women's league right now. And I mean, there's problems with they should be, but it's even like worse the than WNBA. the WNBA. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes. yeah. We talked about that before. Yeah, um, but it's it's even worse that the the double IHF have this annual bunch of tournaments and they're just not doing anything about it. 